Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Glory to God. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Somebody say that. Say it again. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. That has to be built into your consciousness. Pastor, that man is casting a spell. They're doing black magic against me. They're trying to do all kinds of evil. And when I woke up and I was stepped out of the house that morning, I saw some lime. I saw a, 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 a chili. I saw some turmeric. I saw all this. Walk over it. Said nothing shall by any means hurt me. No matter what they do, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Glory to God. No matter how much they try. Because remember, the devil has been defeated. The devil is not going to be defeated. Jesus went down to hell, destroyed his power, annihilated him, took the keys of death and hell from his hands, came back and said, it is over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are no longer in a battle. It is you, you, Whatever battle you're facing is in your mind. The devil is a defeated foe. It's something you've got to establish in your heart and in your mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, no devil can stop the effect of your words. That's why you need to speak. Silent Christians cannot have any signs from God. If you're a child of God, you've got to be vocal. Hallelujah. You got to say what God says. My God shall supply all my need. You walk into the house, there is nothing. You open the fridge, there is nothing. You walk into the pantry, everything is empty. You try to reach in your pocket, the, the wallet is empty. You try to reach and open the, your, your wife's purse, there is nothing there. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ. Money, come to me now in Jesus' name. Speak to it. Command it. Command it to come to you. Don't sit in a corner and say, oh Lord, why are you doing this to me? Lord, I'm so faithful. I go to church. I give my tithe. I return my tithe. I give offerings. I pray much. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Why are you doing this? Are you a fool to even ask that question? God is not the one that's doing that. God is not the one that's doing it. The devil is trying to use our ignorance to keep us trapped. That's why you're going to attack the devil and say, no way devil, you cannot keep me in lack. Poverty cannot rule over my life. Therefore I declare, when I speak, no devil can stop it. And I declare in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, all my needs are met. Hallelujah. But my God shall supply. Not you devil, God shall supply. I don't care what you're doing against me. God is going to overcome that for me. And God is going to provide for me. Therefore I command money wherever you are. My name is written over it my name is written over it so you know where you should be you should be right now in my pocket amen so I command you to come right now to me in Jesus mighty name somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. it is not legal and it's not right for a child of God to be starving it is not right it is not correct and it is an error for a child of God to be living in poverty when Jesus has paid the price, when Jesus has made the provision, the only reason we're not enjoying it is because you're not bold enough to vocalize your faith. Faith is released by the spoken word. So you got to learn to speak your faith. The power he has given you is in your mouth. So if you shut your mouth, the power is not released. Somebody say amen. The words you speak carry the power of God. What you say under the circumstances is what matters. What you say under the circumstances is what matters. When you don't have anything, what do you say? When you're feeling sick in your body, what do you say? What you say under the circumstance. Under the circumstances, the disciples said, Don't you care? We are about to die. Don't you care that we are perishing? They walk Jesus up. Under the circumstances, what did Jesus say? Peace be still. He knew 
knew who he was. He said, I know my God said, my father said, I shall go to the other side. Which devil? Where is that devil that can stop me? He said, every devil, every demonic power that has caused this storm to rise, listen to my words. Peace be still in the name of Jesus is what we need to say. Amen. We got to vocalize our faith. Come on, child of God. Enough is enough. You kept silent for too long. You've just murmured for too long. You've just whispered for too long. The devil does not like those, does not hear those kind of words. The devil is a crook. The devil is a criminal. And you need to know how to talk to a criminal. You need to know how to talk to a crook. That crook and the criminal does not know what it is to, to answer to politeness. You got to be rough. You got to know how to put pressure on him. You got to let him know who you are. You got to let him know you are in charge and not he. He is not in charge, but you are in charge because God has anointed you to be in charge of your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory to God. What you say under the circumstances is what matters. What did Jesus say to the storm? Be still. Amen. Satan will give up and back off when you begin to speak the word of God. Satan will stop its endeavors. And back off when you begin to speak the word of God. Number one, Satan will bow. Number two, angels act on what you say. See, when you say something, there are things that are happening. God has given us to take over and subdue the enemy, the in demonic powers behind that issue, by the word we speak. And when we speak, listen to Psalm 103 verse 20, please. Psalm 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The angels that excel in strength and do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Angels stand in a, to attention to carry out what you say, which is in line with what God said. See, your angels are activated and your angels begin to work when you say what God said because they're waiting on the word of God. My friend, that's why you should learn not to joke too much. When you say contrary words to the word of God and say you're joking, the angels cannot work. It's confusing commands. So angel will not move. That's why there is, a, there is a statement, there is a verse in Ecclesiastes I want you to see. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Don't say something and say, oh, I'm sorry. Wherefore should God be angry at thy, vo at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? So don't stop joking like that and stop saying things that are contrary to God's word and expect the angels to work for you. The angels cannot work. Number three, God backs whatever you say. God backs what you say. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 26. Isaiah 44 26. He confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. Glory to God. He confirmeth the word of his servants and performeth the counsel of his messengers. God abideth faithful and he cannot ever deny himself. You know, that's why we need to learn when we say something, God is backing it up. Especially when you're saying something from the word of God. Say amen. He said in Joel chapter 3, and this we said last time too. He said, Joel chapter 3 verse 10, he says, Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, let the weak say, well that's the word of God. So let the weak say, see whenever we're feeling weak, let's say what? I am strong. Somebody shout, I'm strong. I'm strong. Come on, say I'm strong. See, it's when you say, I am strong, that your faith will connect you to the divine strength of God and cause that weakness to be swallowed up by God's strength. But when you're feeling weak, we are tempted to say, I'm weak. 
because that makes us feel good and that draws sympathy from others and that draws people to us to sit and to you know sympathize and sorrow with us that that is not going to give you any divine strength but if you want to draw on the divine strength of God even while it's paining and you feel weak you've got to say what God said and God said let the weak say let the weak say amen and the Bible says he became poor that we might become what so everyone that is facing poverty or facing lack or going through a hard time in that area should say I am what come and shout say I'm rich say it again I'm rich say it again I'm rich and you know what when you say that people will misunderstand you people will talk negative about you people will talk bad about you people will heckle at you they say they're rich look they don't even have proper clothing but they boast that they're rich no 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 we're not boasting in us we're boasting in him he said say I'm rich he said say you are the healed he said it so I'm only complying with the demands of scripture I'm complying with the demands of the spirit world that if I want to connect and draw from the spiritual resources of God then I need to do what he told me to do and these are the instructions if I want to feel and experience the strength of God even when I'm feeling weak I need to say I am strong that is not to say that you have to deny feeling weak in spite of feeling weak I'm denying the power of weakness to take over me I'm not trying to communicate to you when I say, listen to this please, this is very careful, when I, very important, when I say, let the weak say I'm strong, when I say I'm strong, I am strong, I'm not trying to communicate with you. Are you with me? I'm not communicating with with other human beings. I'm not trying to impress upon you and say, no, 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 I'm not weak, I'm, I'm strong. No, I'm not trying to talk to you. I am doing something. This is my spiritual exercise. This is my medication. I'm not trying to tell you I'm not weak. Well, I might be feeling weak, but I want to talk to you about it. I want to talk to the one that can help me. Hey, when you're feeling sick, do you go to an accountant? Huh? Do you go to an accountant? You go to a doctor. When I'm going through a tough time, why should I go to you? You can't help me. He can help me. And he's telling me that this is what I need to do. Somebody say amen. Amen. So I'm going to do what he tells me. I don't care what you think about it. Sometimes we'll go to a doctor, he examines, he gives you a prescription, he says, this, this, this medicine, these are the things that I want you to take. You come home, your relative says, where have you been? I've been to the doctor. What was wrong? And you tell them what the problem is, and they say, this, so what, what medication has he prescribed? You go, oh, this one? No, no, this doesn't work. Uh, you should be taking the other one, you know. Uh, I, I, when I went through this, I took this. This is not, this is new, this doesn't work. Stop it. Are you a doctor? I didn't come to you for advice. Are you a doctor? Are you qualified? You're not qualified to help me. He's qualified to help me. You're not qualified to make me rich. He's qualified to make me rich. When I say I'm rich, I'm not trying to boast. I'm not trying to communicate to you. I'm not trying to even tell you what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to tell him that I agree with what he said about me. Therefore, I don't care what you say, what you think, what you feel about me. It's none of your business. My business is to say what he told me to say. And I'm going to say I'm rich. Somebody shout I'm rich. rich. Say it again, "I'm I'm rich. And you're not telling your neighbor about it. You're telling God that you're rich. Because you're trying to come in agreement with God. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? It is not trying to be arrogant. It is not trying to deny something. It is not trying to say something that you are not, that you are. No, it is saying what God said. Are you, are you clear about this? But most people don't like to do it because when you say, when you say I'm rich, people might stop giving you when they, what they were giving out of pity. How long would you want to be pitied? You need to come to a place where you are envied. Every Christian should be in a place where he's envied, not pitied. That's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The people of the world shall envy you. That's what happened to Isaac. He became so powerful, so rich, so wealthy that the government began to fear him. And they envied, the Philistines envied one man, Isaac. It's no longer right for a Christian to be pitied. 
it is right for a Christian to be envied. Come on now, shout amen. amen. That's why church, listen to me. Learn to speak the word only. Glory to God. Learn to say what God said. And when you say it, you don't have to say to anybody. The Bible says the woman with the issue of blood, she kept saying to herself. She kept saying in her heart, under her breath. She kept saying, uh, if I may but touch his, the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. If I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Come on. Say, you, say, you, come, you keep saying, not once, not twice, not ten times, not hundred times, not thousand times. It is as long as it takes for that word to become you and you become that word. Come on now. That is dwelling in the word of God. That is abiding in Christ. Say amen. amen. You are talking the word. You are saying the word. You are memorizing the word. You are you're, you're, uh, regurgitating that word. That word is in your spirit. That word is in your mind. That word is in your mouth. So much so that suddenly it becomes a reality. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, when you say what he says, Satan gives up and angels come to minister and God goes ahead and confirms his word. When you say what he said. See, look at the story of Abram. When Abram was still Abram and had no children, God came to him and he said, your name is Abraham, father of many nations. So from that day, Abraham began to say what God said. Say only what he said or God said. Then the angels will minister and God will back you up. Glory to God. So that's why I said, listen, that word should be in you. This is the scripture that God gave to Joshua. Meditate on that word day and night. Day and night. That word should become a part of you. That word should become a part of your thought processes. The word should become a part of your saying with your mouth. The word should occupy your spirit. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. What saith that the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Hold it. Where is the word? In the mouth, in the heart. Do you get it? So for meditation, the word has to be in the heart and in the mouth. In the heart and in the mouth. The heart is significant because it's not only talking about the spirit, but also your mind. Your heart represents your soul as well. So the soul, the mind is a part of the soul. So the scripture, the word is nigh. It's close to you. Where is it? It's in my mind. It's in my spirit. And it's in my mouth. That's meditation. So constantly, we got to say, what God said, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved him. Me. Hallelujah. I'm more than a conqueror. I cannot lose. He caused me to triumph at all times. In every issue, I am triumphant. In every situation, I will win. He has said, I will teach you to profit. I am profiting in every realm, in every area. The prophet of God is manifesting in my life. Say amen. So this is what we got to keep in our mouth. Listen, in your mouth and in your heart. Your mouth is the compass of your life. Your mouth is the compass of your life. What you say today is what you will become tomorrow. I'm good for nothing. Is if you say that, get ready to become that tomorrow. Amen. Oh, whatever I do, it's not going to work. Get ready for that manifestation. Stop using your mouth to destroy your destiny. This is a tool that God has given us to agree with Him and enjoy the destiny that God has for us. The words of your mouth are the pace setters of your destiny. The words of your mouth are the pace setters of your destiny. Good success lies in your mouth more than anywhere else. Good success lies in your mouth more than anywhere else. This is because your mouth gives expression to your faith, giving birth to a creative force. Your mouth is what gives expression to your faith, and it brings forth the creative power of God. 
That's why he said in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, which we all know, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. How much life you enjoy, how much life you enjoy is determined by how much you speak. How much life you enjoy is determined by how much of it you speak. When you speak death, it comes. You speak life, it flows. You are the one that has to make a choice. I'm sure every one of us longs to live long. Amen? Nobody wants to leave this planet before their destiny is over. Don't ever pray, God, kill me. God, take me away from this place. If you're still alive, God has a plan for you. He knows when you should vacate this place. You've come here on an assignment. Don't try to rush away without fulfilling it. Somebody say amen. Here you are to complete a task. Just because of the pressures, just because of the hard times you're going through, just because of your emotional upheaval, and being emotionally hurt, and you're suffering because of whatever has happened to you in life, don't say, Lord, it's enough. Take me. Kill me. So many love to pray those kind of prayers. You know, they think they're very spiritual. That's far from the truth. Really spiritual people understand they're here on a purpose. God has put them here on an assignment. And no matter what they go through, like Paul, they will say, every day we are being endangered of our life. But we continue with the mission. Amen. No matter what you're going through, you're determined to finish the course. And while we're living, we got to live in good health. Amen. Hallelujah. And God has more provision for it. He paid the price and he said, health is yours. Amen. Come on, church. Just because you're getting up in age doesn't mean you have to become more prone to sickness. No way. No way. At 120, Moses did not need any glasses. Because the Bible says his eyesight was not dim. Sharp. Remember? When he said to God, God, I'd love to see the promised land. He said, you're not getting in there. He said, okay, I'll, I'll grant you a request. Get on top of the mountain and from there look at, your, at, at the promised land. Can you imagine? For I don't know how many miles away it was, but it was a long way off. But from the top of the mountain without a binoculars. Are you with me, church? We're talking about divine spiritual things. We're talking about divine abilities and spiritual abilities. He was able to see the promised land. He never stepped into it, but he saw it. Friend, God has everything available for us. We got to learn to lay hold of our inheritance and begin to enjoy that. Somebody say amen. amen. Make the right choices. Don't choose death. He said choose life. If Acts chapter 14 verse 3 says, Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and grain and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Watch this. They said they were speaking boldly. So we need to learn to speak boldly the word of God. Every time you speak from the word of God, you're speaking from the realm that cannot be resisted. Every time you speak the word of God, you're speaking from a realm that cannot be resisted. You're speaking from the spirit realm that can alter and change the natural realm. So every time you're saying something that contradicts your mind, that contradicts your feelings, that contradicts your emotions, that contradicts your experience, remember you're saying it and what you're saying is now working on the natural circumstances and bringing about a change. So when I say I'm the healed of the Lord, what am I doing? I'm not trying to communicate to you. I am speaking from the spiritual realm. And when I speak the word of God, that word, that power, the creative power of God's word will begin to change my natural circumstances. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Don't be under the pressure, Pastor, if they say, uh, are you, how are you? Uh, when I'm feeling weak and I'm feeling sick, how can I say I'm healed? Hey, you don't have to lie. You say, by his stripes, I'm the healed. I believe in my healing. I believe in God for he my healing. Don't wor say, speak words that will cause you to contradict what you are praying for and believing in the presence of God. Be careful. Be careful because this mouth, this mouth is what God has given us to establish your destiny. Say amen. God is committed to what you say, whether positive or negative. That's why Matthew chapter 12 verse 37 says, Matthew chapter 12 verse 37, For, thy, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Can you see the power of the words? By thy words thou shalt be justified, which means what? Acquitted, set free. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned, which means you shall be sentenced. So when we come into the presence of God, when we begin to pray, Isaiah 43, 26 says this. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. When you come to God in prayer, remember, it's a court scene. The Father God is seated. He said, put me to remembrance. It's like a lawyer. Quoting the case, or describing the thing, and then quoting the different sections in the, in the law. And saying, based on this section, from this place, and based on this section, from this book, or whatever the books of law are, this is what it should be like. So the judge is listening to all the, all the, all the, all the uh, sections, and then he's looking at how the judgment was passed in previous situations, when similar things happen. And so, based on all that, the judge will either acquit or sentence. So when you're standing in the presence of God, God says, put me to remembrance. What do you say? Lord, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. That's a section. Amen. That's a book of law. Amen. Based on that scripture, Lord, you said that I, I was healed by your stripes. And he said, now put me to remembrance. Then he said, declare thou. After you put God to remembrance, what do you say? What do you do? I say, Lord, I thank you. For I am the healed of the Lord. I declare the word of God. Are you getting this church? Yeah. All right. He says, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. That means that thou, that thou mayest be acquitted. That thou mayest be set free. Your declaration is what will determine your justification. What are you declaring? What are you declaring is important. See, when you learn to learn and understand, I mean, when you understand and learn to use this book, the Bible, in prayer. Remember, prayer is not just an emotional encounter with God. It's a judicial encounter with God. I don't think you got what I said. It's a judicial encounter. You go to God, that's why your prayers must always be word-based. God, I ask this, and I thank you for I receive it, because according to this section, according to this book, according to this scripture, according to this verse, this is what you said. You said, put me to remembrance. I'm putting you to remembrance, Lord, according to what you said. Now I declare, based on that scripture, that I am blessed, that I am healed, that I shall live long and not die, that I shall live and not die and glorify the works of God. Hallelujah. Based on that scripture. God is going to move because I quote scripture and I express my faith. Have you ever seen anybody go into a witness box in the court and the judge says, come on, speak up. And the guy begins to cry. And says, no, I didn't do it. And he begins to cry. And he begins to cry. What, what, what do you think the judge will do? He takes that hammer, bangs it twice. He says, court adjourned. Get your composure right and come back. Because he's not moved by tears. Come on now, amen? He is not moved by tears. God is not moved by tears. God is moved by his word. 
And when you know how to handle that word, and you know how to go to God in prayer with that word, that will make the change and the difference in your life. That's why I said, when you go into the presence of God, you can say, Lord, it is an error for me to be in lack. You know, there was a day in my life that we had nothing in the house, literally nothing, except a little bit of rice. And it was during that time, I mean, I had no money to even buy vegetables or any pulses. I was going through a very hard time. At that time, I had this small booklet. In this booklet, there were all scriptures of the blessing and prosperity of God. And as I was going through it, I came across Psalm 37. He says, the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servants. And that just caught my attention. I sat there in the presence of God and I said, Lord, this is what you said. You delight in the prosperity of your servant. Today, I want to say that you're not delighting because I'm suffering. I have lack in my house. This is not where you want me to be. Because I know you said in your word that you delight. That means you must be in pain because I'm suffering. I was not blaming God. I knew God was on my side. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Don't blame God. God is for you and God is on your side. Somebody shout amen. amen. I began to praise God. And I can't tell you the whole story. But by that night we were blessed. Supernatural. We did not open our mouth nor tell anybody what we were going through. At that time, my wife was pregnant. I hardly could. You remember I told you the story? I was so poor that I could not even buy her a biscuit of her choice. When she asked me to buy me that biscuit, I had no money to buy her that biscuit. I'm not kidding you. But God doesn't leave us there all the time. God builds our spirit man because that's where I learned to trust God for all my provision. Somebody shout hallelujah. I did not get blessed because I went around telling people, I'm living by faith. Can you give me something? No. I never told anybody, nobody did I ever mention that I was in need. I want you to learn something. Speak the word. Speak it with conviction. And what God has spoken is what you should be speaking. Your declaration is what will determine your justification. God has spoken, but what are you speaking? God has spoken. He delights in the prosperity of his servant. What are you speaking? He has spoken. By his stripes you were healed. What are you speaking? Psalm 81 verse 10. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Until you open your mouth wide, your enemies will remain in charge. Until you open your mouth wide, your enemies will remain in charge. They cannot be subdued until you open your mouth and declare publicly what you're expecting. When Jesus came to the fig tree and he looked at it for fruit and there was no fruit, what did he say? Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the Bible says, and the disciples heard it. A public declaration. That means you are bold enough to speak it aloud in the presence of others. That is faith. An expression of what you believe. We are a people of victory. Let's shout victory, triumph, abundance, and divine health. Listen to this. All of us know confession. Confession has no power. Confession has no power until it graduates to a declaration. Confession has no power until it graduates to a declaration. That means what? You're now confessing. I was healed by stripes. I was healed by stripes. You're building that image. You're dwelling in the word. You're building that word into your spirit man, into your mind, into your mouth. You're placing it. And now you come to a point where it's beginning to bubble. It's beginning to rise. It's beginning, and you come to a point. Now you say, boldly you declare it. Even before you see the manifestation, you know it is done. Then you declare. And when you declare that, that's it. Praise God. It has to manifest. 
we must not base our declaration on what we see, but on what we know and what we believe. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Because you believe, you have to speak it. The words you speak are what frame your future. What you say determines what you will have. What you say will determine what you will have. Make sure your words are creative. Your words are offensive to the enemy. And the enemy will be compelled to bow. Don't be polite with the enemy. Use the word of God as a sword to cut him to pieces. It is a weapon of offense. The Bible the word of God is a, weapon of, is a weapon of offense to cut down the devil. It's a balm of Gilead for healing. This morning, as I conclude, I want to encourage you. Don't say with your mouth what you're going through. Say what God is saying about your situation. Somebody say amen. Thank you for joining our online community. For weekly updates, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also click the bell button for further notifications.